this is not just another day it's another chance to meet you all wishing you a day full of sunny smiles and happy thoughts good morning everyone i bid you a very warm welcome to the delegates who took their valuable time and join us today to be a part of the second day of national level faculty development program for the educational leaders we are honored to have you all with us the harder you work for something the greater you will feel when you achieve it i invite mrs st mary arulmathi assistant professor department of commerce madurai gandhi nmr subramanian college to deliver the session chair thank you ma'am good morning to all all the glory belongs to the almighty god it's my pleasure to welcome all the participants from various institutions for the second day of national level faculty development program i heartily welcome our president mr jawahar babu sir correspondent janaranjani ma'am secretary kalaiwani ma'am and our below principal dr gomathi ma'am vice principal and head department of commerce dr mahima ma'am iqac coordinator and administrative officer dr devi ma'am heads of various departments and my dear faculty friends saraswati ma'am sangeetha ma'am surya kala ma'am and sharmila I am very glad to welcome the resource person of the day, Mr. Fleming Sampson, Manager, Global Corporate HR, HCL Chennai. He did his MBA in Human Resource Management and completed three degree such three certificate courses from renowned international institutions. He has been served as HR professional for more than fourteen years and involved various roles such as leadership coaching, diversity and inclusion initiatives, employee engagement. and organizational development he is being with us today to share his knowledge and vast experience we are grateful to you for spending your valuable time in spite of the busy schedule i welcome you sir i welcome you all once again to this fdp and hope that you all will have a great time ahead thank you all Can I take over, ma'am? Uh, can I start? Uh, yes, sir. Good morning, sir. Okay. Welcome, good, you, sir. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning. Thank you very much, ma'am, for the introduction. Uh, I'm so I'm very happy to be here today morning. So, thank you, everyone. Thank you for joining. I'm so excited to be in today's session. Uh, we are in times when uh, you know things are so unpredictable, and uh, you know we we have to be mentally prepared. and um, you know we have to there are so many things that uh, we're going to see today friends and i hope it's going to help all of you uh, i'm extremely thankful to this institution this great institution for uh, uh, for asking me to do this session today so uh, the times at hand is not not within our control friends right so what's actually happening is that there are things that are happening in this world which is beyond our control so you know they say this that uh, you shouldn't actually you know try to do something that's beyond your control or take control of things that are beyond our control so it's important that uh, for us to focus on things that we can only control so we, we're going to uh, look at it from that perspective today friends i'm going to share uh, my deck i have a small deck to present and i'm going to share it with all of you and then uh, we're going to look at some nice concepts and we can handle not just the current time but after the pandemic is over right uh, how do we uh, thrive and sustain ourselves is what we will see today friends right so i'm just going to share my deck So, ma'am, is my deck visible, ma'am, on the screen? Yes, sir. Okay, okay. Thank you, ma'am. So, so friends, uh, thank you very much for joining. Uh, a warm good morning to all of you. So, the topic that we will talk about is uh, about leading and thriving in the post-pandemic world, right? So, so uh, a lot of people are having a lot of questions in their mind: Is the world going to return back to normal, or if things will be back? okay very soon right 
So friends, I'm going to give you the assurance today that things are going to, you know, not completely return back to the state at which we were, but we're going to be better is what I would say, friends, right? So things at uh, at present are getting better. I'm sure you're, uh, you're watching things happening. A lot of research has come, vaccination drives are going on, and a lot of uh, nice things are happening around, right? So if you see the pictures on the screen, I just love both these pictures. So if you see there's, there's a person, you can call them doctors, scientists who are helping to transition this phase and move on to the next phase. So there is going to be a bright side after COVID. The first picture there represents that, right, friends? We're going to go beyond this, uh, this particular period and go into a brighter phase, brighter than ever before, a phase that, you know, uh, we've never seen in our entire lives because things are getting much better. We will talk about it today, friends. And on the right side, there's a picture which talks about the world getting back into its own busy state. We are headed for those times. So I'm going to give you that hope today. This is based on a lot of research of what we're talking today, friends. I want to start off with this small but powerful quote by Winston Churchill that's there on the bottom of the screen, right? Never, never, never give up. That's what Winston Churchill said, and it became a, a very profound, irrefutable quote. So friends, here I'm here to tell you today that the moment we give up is only when we lose. So I would encourage uh, all of you friends that you don't give up, right? Uh, I mean, I'm sure you've heard of this quote, similar quotes, that the moment we give up, that's when we actually lose. But if you're, if you're trying to do things again, and if you're not giving up, hope is what is needed at this point of time. And we're going to look at a lot of nice strategies and techniques on how we can sustain this period and look forward to you know thriving in the post-pandemic world. Right, friends? So on the screen, you see some of the topics that will be covered today, right? I'm going to be quick, friends, uh, So because I have limited time. Right. So these are the key takeaways for today's session. We are, going, we are going to look at something called as shift in perception. You know, this shift in perception is needed. Right. Initially, when I joined the session, I saw there's a there's a video that was running, which which spoke about this perception. Very important. We're going to talk about that, the psychology behind that. We will talk about a concept called stimulus and response. Right. We will learn about it. We will also today look at uh, participating in the radical change happening in these new normal times, right? So this period is called as new normal. I hope all of you have heard about this period, friends. It's called the new normal time. Today, we will look at how do we, you know, handle the changes happening in these new normal times? How do we program a subconscious mind, right? That's a very interesting topic we will look at. We are also going to learn about the nine competencies to thrive in a post-COVID world. So after COVID is over, right, post-pandemic world, what are the competencies that will be so important according to Forbes? We will look at the nine competencies. We will look at uh, passion and excellence. So the two very important things, friends, we will look at that. We will also learn about what are those barriers that affect effectiveness and how can we overcome those barriers? We will also look into that. We will learn about something called as uh, escape velocity and how can you develop that escape velocity, right? We will learn about that. Maybe it sounds like physics, but it's more than that, right? We will look at a concept called interdependence. And then finally, 12 things you can do right today that your future self will thank you for. So these are the key takeaways uh, for today's uh, session, friends. And towards the end, we will have a time of questions where you can ask me questions, right? So now there's a beautiful quote at the bottom of the screen, friends. You know, each day is actually giving us a new opportunity to improve ourselves. So let's uh, make use of this opportunity today, friends. Don't take this session lightly because it can give you a lot of information. I would recommend that you take a notepad and a pen and keep it ready before you, friends, right? So that you can take down things uh, with, uh, you know, you can refer to it later, right? So I'm going to start, friends. Uh, so I want to start off with this, right? It's so important. This perception is so important. Right, and the way we see things are uh, important, friends. It's so important. So there on the screen, you have a beautiful quote by Zig Ziglar. Zig Ziglar is a management guru. He's also authored profound books. He says, before you change your thinking, you have to change what goes into your mind. It's a very powerful quote. I just love this quote, friends, right? Before you change your thinking, you have to you know, be selective of what you are allowing 
to get into your mind. So I'm going to quickly share something, friends. You know, if you if you see the pictures, uh, you'll you'll get to understand. Uh, you know, picture is worth a thousand words, they say, right? So if you look look at the news channels these days, right? I would recommend that you don't even watch the news channels because if you look at the news channels, um, you will see that it's filled with all kinds of toxic information, right? They talk about reality, but in an extrapolated manner. They exaggerate what is happening just to make it a source of entertainment and to increase their TRP ratings or whatever. So friends, I want you to uh, be very careful and selective about what you allow yourself, right, to, uh, you know, what are you watching? Be selective in what you're watching. It could be a movie, it could be uh, the news channels or anything. Even movies can completely disturb us. And uh, the most important thing in a human body is the mind, right? Because that's what governs the human body. And if you corrupt your mind, which is probably you can, in technical terms, you can call it as a software, right? If So any toxic information that gets into your mind, friends, it's like a virus, right? It's worse than a virus. So uh, the mind is actually, if a polluted or a corrupted mind is more dangerous than COVID itself, friends. So we have to be very careful about this. You have to be very selective about what you're watching, right? Do not watch every movie, friends. Be selective. Look at the, uh, you know, find, find the... Uh, the review of that movie and then go ahead. See, there are a lot of devastating, psychologically devastating movies out there. I, I can name a few, all right? Um, if you're a fan of those movies, I'm sorry if I'm offending you, friends, because there are some movies that, uh, that are pathetic. You know, for example, Final Destination is one such example or Wrong Turn. There are movies like that. I've, had, I've made the mistake of watching those movies in the past. Now I'm very careful, friends. So, but at the, uh, on the other on the other extreme, you also have some nice movies, right? Like Forrest Gump, not Forrest Gump. It's one movie that all of you should watch. I would highly recommend you to watch that movie, friends. And um, so why am I saying this is because you have to be very careful about what you allow into your mind through your eyes, because we watch through our eyes. And you know what the brain does is the brain actually registers this information for a long time. I'm going to share a story here, friends, right? I'm going to share a story that will tell you the significance of these visuals, all right? In fact, uh, there's a lot of science to it. I'm sure you've heard about it in science. When lightning uh, and... You get to see the lightning first, right? The light, I mean, the, the science is that light travels faster than sound. That's right. And it's important for us. It's important. See, these visuals are so powerful, friends, and it's important for us to actually, you know, uh, be careful about what we allow inside, right? So, so I want to share a, an incident that really happened. Uh, this this happened in a hospital uh, at in in our in our own country, right? So there was this lady who was admitted in a critical care unit. She had some complexity in her uh, uterus, right, friends? So she was about to deliver uh, a baby within some time, right? Even before uh, several months, when the baby was forming, they had some multiple complications in her uterus. So doctors told that she has to be under critical observation, or else it could be harmful for both the mother and the baby. So this particular lady was admitted uh, in an intensive care unit. And uh, she, she could get conscious in between and then she would get into an unconscious state. So apparently opposite to her bed and right in front of her, there was a picture of a chimpanzee, right? I'm not sure why they kept a picture of a chimpanzee in a hospital, but there was a picture of a chimpanzee kept right in front of her. So the first thing she gets to see in the morning when she wakes up is the chimpanzee, right? And the last thing she sees before she sleeps off during the night is again the chimpanzee. Friends, I'll tell you something. Ninth month when the baby was delivered, doctors were baffled because the anatomy or the skull structure of the baby was just like that of the chimpanzee. Can you imagine? So this is a real incident, friends. Uh, it just talks about what how much these visuals that you watch can affect you. Why? Because your brain is actually storing these visuals, right? And uh, it, can, uh, it can even affect your cells is what the research has found out, right? 
So I hope you're understanding the, uh, the severity of uh, how much these visuals can impact us. So be very careful, even people at your homes, friends, uh, be, ask them to be very selective about what they're watching, right? Even if you have children at home, you have to lock some channels. Even those video games uh, these days are so filled with violence. Let me remind you, friends, in countries where they are encouraging terrorism, right? What do they do? They show these videos of violence to those small children, right? So first time when they are seeing those videos, they are, right? They're, they're probably closing their eyes. Then slowly they are curious about watching those videos. And then slowly what happens is the aggression that is shown in, shown to them, right? The aggressive displays of violence, it slowly gets into them, friends. It gets into you without your knowledge. You can't consciously process it or you, can, you cannot consciously control it. Unconsciously, it can go and affect our mind. It can feed aggression into you, right? So let's be very careful, friends, and selective about what you're watching, especially the news channels, the movies, and so on, right? Be very selective. That's what I would recommend today. And this is the bit because your mind is so important. It's so important. If you can be careful about what your mind is exposed to, I think it will take care of the rest of the, your things in your life. I've recently heard uh, something from my friend, uh, which I'm just getting reminded of. So I think this was around two weeks back. There's a friend of mine who looked, uh, I mean, he's also my colleague. So I connected with him on a video call and he wasn't looking very happy and he looked very dull. So I asked him, what's happening? Uh, is everything fine in, uh, with you? I asked him, he said, everything is fine. But I sa saw a very depressing movie last night. And I don't know why the story is still affecting me. So let me remind you, friends, let's be very careful, right? Because these... Uh, these movies or these visuals can spoil our day. It can not only spoil our day, it can spoil our lives by ruining our character, ruining our internal uh, you know, mindset and perception and paradigm. It can feed us with a lot of violence. It can feed us with a lot of aggression, right? So let's be very careful. This is what I want to start off with friends. So be very careful about what you are exposing your right um just moving forward friends so here this is very important for us our response is very important it's our response that matters right so here there is a beautiful research on the screen and uh, i want to just read out those words for you when you can't control what's happening challenge yourself to control the way you respond to what's happening that's where your power is Right now, friends, there are certain things happening in this world to which we do not have a control on. A small example is this COVID, right? We may have a certain level of control by getting ourselves vaccinated and probably getting ourselves, um, you know, adhering to the guidelines of the government by staying six feet, feet away from people and, uh, you know, keeping our immunity levels high and all that. But we don't have complete control. So when we don't control certain things, you shouldn't be too worried about th those things, right? Now, let's not just talk about COVID. There are so many other triggers in our life. It's called a stimulus. What is the stimulus? Stimulus can be people. It can be situations, circumstances, things that happen day in and day out, right, friends? People can be a trigger for us, right? Sometimes what happens, friends? Let me remind you, you might recollect certain things happening in your life where Somebody tells you something in the morning, they would have irritated you. And what would have happened throughout the day, you would have been irritated because of that person saying something to you, right? You've allowed that to, you know, affect you. So in fact, this concept was uh, given by Dr. Stephen Covey. In fact, I would recommend this book strongly, friends. It's about, um, you know, the seven habits of highly effective people. Dr. Stephen Covey has written that book. He's the author. So he talks about stimulus and response. So he says, between stimulus and response, there is a space. And that is the choice where we can, we have a choice to freely decide our response. We don't have to react. We just have to respond. So, so for example, let me give you a simple example, friends. Maybe you're getting into an argument with your friend or with your spouse or with someone, right? At your home or your office. 
Now imagine that the conversation between you and your colleague or your or your family member is getting into a very argumentative state where you realize that this can affect the relationship. It gets to a point where both of you are, uh, you know, shouting at each other. It's possible, right? It happens sometimes. So there has to be a point of time when you have to realize that, you know, you can easily win an argument. You just have to be street smart, right? To win an argument. But if you think, look at it from a very mature perspective, friends, is the argument important or the relationship important, right? So it's okay to lose the argument and win the relationship. A lot of people have done, the, done a mistake here, right? They wanted to win the argument, but they lost a relationship. Relationships can get devastated because of the way we react. So friends, we should learn to respond and not to react, right? Not just to people, to situations, to circumstances. It's not easy, right? Uh, it is, uh, it's an ongoing uh, practice. I think we need to try it consciously if you're taking an effort to, you know, uh, consciously if, if you're taking an effort, uh, I'm sure you will be able to, you know, friends, overcome that urge to be impulsive. You know, we're all impulsive. And uh, psychology says that our brains are wired more to negativity by, by, you know, naturally we are wired that way. But we have to train our minds to be positive, right, friends? And uh, we have to train our minds to be very, um, you know, be very careful about how we respond. So before you respond, you have to pause, right? Someone tells you something, you have to immediately pause. Let me tell you something very interesting. Most of the battles we usually fight are not even meant to be fighting, right? We could have been at peace. Our life could have, lives could have been at peace if we didn't involve ourselves in those battles, right, friends? So I want to uh, suggest you today and recommend to you today that, you know, be very careful, you know, when externally, when something triggers you, do not react to it, right? Respond to it. Your response really matters, right? So this uh, stimulus and response is important. This is uh, a follow-up of after the mindset, right? We saw about how... Uh, the mindset is important. After this, the stimulus is also, you know, how we respond to your stimulus is so important, right? I will take your questions, friends. You can note down your questions and I will take them throughout. Uh, I mean, not throughout. I mean, towards the end, I will, I'll be able to answer to your questions, right? Okay. I want to share a quick story, friends. Maybe you're a little bored up, uh, you know, hearing all these theoretical uh, research work. Let me share a, a beautiful story here, right? It's about potatoes, eggs, and coffee beans. I hope all of you had breakfast and I'm not, you know, making you hungry, right? So the message is very simple. The story is very simple, friends. You know, there's a, a father and a daughter having a conversation. Now, the, the father is a chef. And in fact, the, the picture of the guy on the screen is also a chef, right? Okay, so... The father is a chef and he's having a conversation with his daughter. So he wants to teach his daughter a particular lesson, a moral. So he takes her to, a, to the kitchen and uh, he has three ingredients there. What are they? Eggs, potatoes and coffee beans. Now the daughter is actually bored. He, uh, she asks him, dad, you want to teach me a lesson through eggs, potatoes and coffee beans? I hate all this. So dad says, wait, be patient. I'll teach you a lesson. Then he boils the potatoes, all right? and keeps it aside. Then he boils the potatoes and keeps it aside. He boils the eggs and keeps it aside. Then he actually uh, boils the coffee beans and keeps it aside, right? And then he tells her, the eggs went into the boiling water. It went in soft and came out hard, right? The potatoes went into the boiling water. It went in hard, but came out soft, right friends? And the coffee beans, it actually went into the boiling water. It completely changed the color of the water itself. And he, uh, he told her the moral that situations can actually be tough sometimes, but it's the way we come out of the situation that really matters. Right, friends? So we might be going through a confusing period as of now, but make use of this period, friends. Don't lose this period. Invest in yourself, right? Make yourself stronger, right? I'm sure after this is over, I think we can face any battle in our life. This is the biggest battle all of us have been fighting. After once this is over, friends, we'll be coming out strong, right? I'm reminded of the oak tree. Uh, in the African jungles, there's this oak tree, all right? So every time it's one of the strongest trees, 
So how does it get stronger? It seems the storm actually makes it stronger. Every time the storm hits it, the roots, you know, go deeper and deeper. Deeper and deeper, and after that, no storm can move that tree. Likewise, I think we're getting stronger, and I think we should be like the coffee bean, right? Uh, situation: uh, the water, the the boiling water. What happened? It it brought out the best in the coffee bean. The coffee bean uh, became a flavored water where people can actually relish by drinking it, right? The aroma of that is just amazing. So I think, uh, friends, this is an amazing story which talks to us. can be tough for us, but we will have to, you know, friends, uh, make use of the situation and come out as gold, you know, gold process. I'm not going to be detailed about it, friends, uh, but the process that gold goes through is, um, is a very tough process, right? Gold is actually uh, put through fire, right, friends? Uh, gold is put through fire. It is, uh, are you all able to hear me, friends? I think there's uh, some bit of fluctuation in my connectivity. Is my voice audible to all of you? Yes, sir. Excuse me, sir. It's not audible, sir. Samsung, sir. Participants, please wait.
participants there was a technical error please wait Good morning all. The resource person will join shortly. Please wait. skillful and the best in the fighting skills in many wars he was sent on the battlefield and he would return only after being victorious he was the most loved elephant of the king out of hundreds and thousands time went by and the elephant started getting old the king did not send him to the battlefield anymore but he still remained a part of the king's team because whenever the king saw him he felt good he felt happy the elephant once went to the lake for a drink his feet got stuck in the mud there and he started sinking into it he tried a lot but he couldn't pull himself out of the mud 
people around knew the elephant was in trouble by the sound of his screams this news also reached the king there was panic because everybody knew he was the king's favorite the king reached there and all other people gathered around the elephant and made various efforts to get him out but there was no way out it was not some small animal it was an elephant in the meantime an old retired minister from the king's court was passing by after understanding the situation he spoke to the king and suggested that the battle drums be played around the lake the listeners found bizarre however as soon as the drums of war started ringing there was a change in the behavior of the troubled elephant the elephant slowly stood up and then pulled himself out of the mud on his own everybody around was shocked there wasn't a lack of physical ability in the elephant just the need to infuse enthusiasm within was required and that was done to maintain enthusiasm in life it is necessary that humans maintain a purposeful thinking and mindset and do not let despair dominate now why did i tell you all this story in today's challenging times we all need to infuse enthusiasm in ourselves and the people around us by playing these battle drums we need to celebrate abundance of good health joy happiness love and we have to stop talking about these tough times and how these tough times have been treating us there is a lot of good happening guys we have to see it and let's be grateful for all that
Okay, so friends, I'm back. Um, my apologies, friends. Um, my apologies, everyone. I went through a small disturbance and I somehow was able to connect back. Am I audible to all of you? Uh, Ma'am, can you confirm? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, okay. thank you, ma'am. So, so, yes, yes, thank you, ma'am. I just went through some bit of connectivity fluctuations. So, um, my apologies, friends, uh, for keeping you waiting. I hope you were, uh, it gave you some time to think about what was already covered, right? Um, you might have used this time to think about what was covered. I, I hope you remember the story. I'm going to go forward, friends, and uh, take you through other concepts as quick as possible, right? Uh, we just lost, lost some time, but that's okay. If that buffer has helped you in, uh, you know, thinking through some things valuable, that's nice, right? Okay. So we spoke about mindset. We spoke about uh, how we'll have to uh, respond, not react. We also saw a story on how we have to, you know, friends, come out of the situation strong, just like uh, the coffee beans making the situation, right? Making the hot water more valuable and aromatic. So understanding and coping with the radical changes that's happening is important. If you look at the screen, there's, there's a very profound quote by this man, Charles Darwin, right? I hope all of you have heard about Charles Darwin. And uh, Charles Darwin stated uh, a very profound uh, statement in 1809, right? He said, it is not the strongest of the species that can survive, nor the most intelligent, but the one most responsive to change. That's what he said. And uh, it's so true, friends, right? Just imagine he was talking about nature and uh, how nature has to survive and sustain itself. But this definition is so close to us today, right? And our current scenario. If we are not, uh, you know, if you're not intelligent enough to accept the change and embrace it, we'll get wiped out, friends, right? It's very simple here. I hope you understood this statement. It is not the strongest of the species. So it's not the strongest of us, uh, of us that can survive or most, not even the most knowledgeable person, but the one who is responding to change. So how do we respond to this change is what we will see, friends, right? Change is what you're seeing everywhere today. If you go outside today, if you're looking, looking into the TV, you see a lot of changes happening every single day. Colleges have changed their teaching methodology. Schools and colleges have changed that. Corporates have completely revised their uh, organizational structure. They have revised their policies and SOPs, right? Standard operating procedures and everything have got rewritten. In fact, this change is going to be uh, something that's going to keep happening. That's because that's the only thing that's constant, right, friends? So how do we, you know... Um, Partner with this change. Let me tell you something, friends. The need of the R now is to embrace the change. If we are going to resist the change, I mean, that's not going to help us in any way. It will not favor us. So how do we embrace this change is what we will see, friends, right? I'm going to quickly show you that. Now, before we embrace the change, you should remember that this change is good for us, right? On the screen, you have this uh, metamorphosis of the butterfly, right? I hope all of you have learned about this in science that if a butterfly has to really be effective in the sense if it has to come out and fly powerfully, it has to go through a period of loneliness inside a shell in a cocoon, right? I'm, I'm sure all of us have learned that in biology that there are certain stages for a butterfly. And once it goes through that tough phase, it comes out colorfully, spreads out its wings and flies. So this particular stage is called metamorphosis, the stages that the butterfly goes through uh, from the lava, the pupa, you know, the different stages still it flies as a butterfly. So we could be in those stages. Those stages are there even in our life, right, friends? A stage where we are shut completely in a shell. And then when we come out, right, we become so beautiful, we fly like a butterfly. So it's so important for, so just imagine, Imagine the butterfly, you know, it spoke to someone from inside the cocoon, right? It, it had a chance to speak to someone and say, hey, cut me open, right? And probably you heard the butterfly saying that and you kept, you took a knife and cut open the, the cocoon. What would have happened? It would have simply died, friends, right? It wouldn't, because it didn't go, go through that process. I think this process is needed not just for the butterfly, but for all of us. Once the process is complete, we, we will come out stronger, right, friends? So I'm going to show you something very important based on research, right? 
This is a, a very powerful statistics you see on the screen. If you do not embrace change, what can be the repercussions for that is there on the screen, friends, right? If you see this, this is a very powerful statistics. And uh, it says that 52 percentage of the Fortune 500 firms since 2000 are gone. Friends, getting into the Fortune 500 list is not that easy, right? These companies are, you know, probably amazing companies that did a great job, but they did a mistake, right? Which didn't keep them in the list. And the mistake that they did is there on the screen. The answers, the reasons why they were not able to sustain themselves. And these, I'll tell you friends, these 500 firms, and I'll tell you one particular firm in that is Kodak. I hope all of you have heard about Kodak when we were small, you know, that film role, right? Kodak. I mean, they vanished, they, they got vanished. Blackberry, Comcast, there's so many products like that. Nokia itself, right friends? So what happened to these products? What happened to these uh, Fortune uh, 500 firms uh, that completely vanished is they did not respond to change. Second is they were not innovative. They didn't creatively uh, approach, right? They didn't have a creative approach. And then they did not stick to the trends. They were resisting the change. And hence what happened is, it became like, um, I'm not sure if you remember this story, right? The rabbit and tortoise story, right? Friends, the rabbit thought that it can, it can sit for a while and take some rest. But when it rested, what happened? It's competitor, the turtle, right? Or the tortoise just went ahead. In fact, the tortoise was very slow, but still it went ahead and won the race. Now, Nokia is a classic example that can uh, connect with the story really well. Nokia were pioneers in the mobile uh, mobile business, right, friends? And just imagine everybody had a Nokia phone. I remember the, the only name that anybody can remember for a mobile phone some years back is Nokia. What happened? They completely vanished. In fact, they're there. They're trying to come back, but they, the competitors have gone far ahead of them, right? These are the reasons. Now, this can happen to us as well if we are not doing certain things or not equipping ourselves or not, you know, understanding the change and embracing the change and getting, uh, you know, upgrading ourselves by learning more. It can, this can happen to us as well. I'm not scaring you friends, but this is reality because the changes are happening. Let me tell you, you could be anyone, right? Uh, you would have a lot of research work, done a lot of research work. You could have learned a lot, but the knowledge that you have today, right? As you're, as you're listening to me today on this call, the knowledge that you have today will become totally irrelevant in two, three years, friends. I'm, I'm, I'm just giving you a buffer of two, three years. It can be even just one year possible, right? Sooner or later, the knowledge that we have today will totally become irrelevant. And that's the reason why you have to keep upskilling yourself, certifying yourself, learning new things. Otherwise, later on, we will become irrelevant, irrelevant. So today, if you ask me, what should, what do you want to me, uh, what do you want me to be in five years time? In fact, this was, this is a very common question, you know, that uh, people ask you in the interviews. What do you want? Where do you see yourself five years from now? One amazing answer you can say is that I want to be relevant even after five years. That's a very powerful answer. I think um, this is a very powerful answer. In fact, uh, it, it'll simply say that, you know, you will you 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 like you like to learn you keep like to keep upskilling yourself and you want to be relevant even after five years right friends so you could be on the right track today but if you are not progressing forward the very right track can become the wrong track friends this happened for nokia and so is the case with the rabbit story right robin rabbit was also on the correct road correct direction everything was fine direction was fine road was fine it was going ahead, but simply it decided to rest for a while. That period of rest is a very dangerous time. In a sense, we have to keep progressing forward. We have to keep moving forward. What do we do here to move forward is what I will tell you today, friends. So I'm going to reveal some secrets to all of you on what you can do to move forward, right? Please listen very carefully, friends, because the coming slides are so important because the change is very radical these days, right? Unprecedented change, they call it. In the sense, you do not know what's going to happen tomorrow, right? Uh, processes can change. Methodologies are changing. Look at uh, the sessions happening, right? I wish this was a face-to-face -face session, right, friends, where I could uh, visit uh, your college uh, at uh, Madurai and have this on a face-to-face. -face. And I think that's what all of us like, right? We like the face-to-face -face, uh, uh, teaching or coaching or training really well. In fact, that's what I like. But 
today, I mean, we are, all of us are in our home uh, and we are leveraging technology and it has its own limitations, right? I, you saw I was completely lost for some time. So technology has its limitations, right friends? So how do we respond to this change? I'm going to show you some very powerful things, friends. Please pay attention, right? So in order for us to respond to this change, we need to take some steps, right? Let me show you this participating in the radical changes that are happening during these new normal times. What do you do? The first thing that you need to do is you need to accept the change. Accept it in the sense, believe it, welcome it and agree to it. Do not resist it, friends. No, 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 I don't want this change. Uh, this change is suffocating. I, I'm not liking this change. It's discomforting. If you're pushing this change off, sooner or later, we will be in a state like Nokia. Nokia tried to push the change off. You know why? They were very comfortable with what they were doing earlier, friends. I think we are all comfortable certain times. We get into comfort zones. Let me give you an example. After the computers were introduced, right? Even after computers were introduced, many government institutions and other places, there were still typewriters. I mean, of course, not now, but for a certain period, people still had typewriters. Why? Because they were so comfortable using those typewriters, they were not willing to let go of those typewriters. They could use computers which were much more faster, but it took a long time for them to transition from the typewriter to the computer. That shows that Change is not that easy. It is uncomfortable. But once you embrace it, life, life becomes more effective. Compare a typewriter with a computer, friends. I think that can give you the answer, right? So when, when, the, when the computers were introduced, not many people liked it. They said, no, no, I'm comfortable with a typewriter. I learned shorthand. <laughs> you know, I've, I've heard these conversations from a lot, lot of people. I've, heard, I've learned a shorthand. Now, what do I do with all that thing that I've learned? Yes, you have to let go of all those things that you've learned, friends, and embrace the new. You have to believe, welcome, and agree to the change. There are changes happening in your teaching methodologies. There are changes, changes happening in so many things in your life. You cannot simply resist it, friends. I remember I, I was talking to one of my friends. Uh, he happens to be a lecturer in one of the colleges. So he said, Fleming, I'm not liking this change. I do not like to handle the technical stuff of Zoom and the Google Duo and all this is disturbing me. I do not like it at all. I said, you have to like it. <laughs> right, friends? You have to like it. Without liking the technology of, because that's the medium you're going to use to, you know, channelize your learning forward. How will you be able to really, you know, partner in your, in your learning uh, system? So friends, the only solution here is to embrace this change. There are people on the call, probably if you have not embraced this change, friends, my humble suggestion is that you just embrace it. Embrace this technological change that's happening. Don't you know, resist it. Just, just embrace it, right? The first thing is to accept it, believe, welcome, and agree. The second thing you have to do is you can't stop by just accepting. You can't say, okay, I have accepted and keep quiet. You have to adapt to the change. For that, what should you do? You should redesign yourself, alter yourself, and uh, personally upgrade yourself. Right? So friends, I'm sure all of you keep changing uh, phones once in a while, right? Right? Whenever a new model phone comes, what do we do? We throw the old model and go and buy a new model. All of us are like that. Remember, friends, we should not only keep changing our phones, but we should keep upgrading ourselves. Otherwise, we will become irrelevant at some point of time. This is the lesson, friends. This is a very important slide. Do not be satisfied with the knowledge that you have in you as of today. It is going to become irrelevant in probably two, three years down the line. This is the fact. I'm not telling you a lie here, friends, right? This is based on a lot of research. Most of the information that we have today is going to get irrelevant in some time. So we, what should we do is we have to keep redesigning ourselves. I'm going to show you how. How can you equip yourself? How can you keep being relevant so that after this, after a few years, you're still able to sustain yourself. You're still able to thrive in the industry. Right? Or else, you know, there is a new set of skills that the industry is going to look forward to in a few years' time from now. I'm going to show you those skills. Right, friends? So we have to keep ourselves future ready. I hope that term you all understand. Being future ready. If you're not future ready, it's going to shock us. 
it's going to shock us friends i hope this session is going to throw some light onto you and awaken many of you many of us sometimes are just comfortable with what we used to keep doing but if we are not you know friends changing or if you are not redesigning ourselves things are going to shock us so after you redesign yourself what should you do i mean you don't have to do anything the integration automatically happens you will get blended to the change you will get unified to the change you will get unified to the current trend and only people who fuse with the system will sustain and thrive people who are you know resisting the change will not be able to blend with the system they will just be you know wiped out friends this is the answer right they will get wiped out i hope you you are able to understand this keep your questions ready friends so remember this i think i showed this to you earlier in uh, another slide as well even if you are on the right track right you will get run over if you simply sit there it happened in the case of the rabbit and the tortoise it happened in the case of nokia let's not make it happen in our lives friends let's not be left behind so we shouldn't be sitting right we should be going ahead right friends okay so keep your questions since ready uh, there will be definitely a time for that now after you have you know you have uh, you know accepted the change after you have starting to you know how do you equip yourself i will show you that there is another thing very important right once you have embraced the change there is something that's important called goal if you do not have a goal <laughs> it's it's that means you do not have an any idea about the destination right friends so in the sense you should have your goal in your mind even before you reach a destination i'll i'll tell you a small story here friends um i'm i'm sure you've heard about in the 1960s right and during that period there were two guys who climbed the mount everest i'm sure all of you heard have heard about these guys right two guys who, who climbed the mount everest they were the first to climb the mount everest right um i think it's around 29000 feet I'm not sure about the exact feet but more than 20000 feet above sea level the distance of mount everest climbing that mountain is not very easy but there were two guys who climbed the mount everest right in fact i asked this question in one of my sessions earlier uh, i asked the people who climbed mount everest the first and someone said neil armstrong <laughs> right and i'm just getting reminded of that so it was edmund hillary and tenzing norgay who climbed mount everest right friends i hope you remember those guys later on they interviewed uh, edmund hillary edmund hillary is an american uh, tenzing norgay is a sherpa or a guide from nepal so later on when they interviewed uh, uh, edmund hillary and they asked him what made you reach up is it not difficult was it not difficult what made you reach up you know what he said friends he said even before i started my journey in my mind i had already reached the top of the hill that's what he said it's a very powerful statement even before i started to climb the hill in my mind i was already up that means the answer to that that is there on the screen your mind must arrive at the destination before your life does that means you should have a plan in fact abdul kalam ji right the man we all respect he spoke about vision 2020 unfortunately uh, that great man was not able to see that year but you know that's it you know are we visionaries are we able to see the future you have to arrive at the future at least in your mind friends before your lives arri life arrives at it you know because that's that's very powerful i'll 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 tell you it's called blueprinting process all right this is exactly the the foundations of design thinking i'm not sure if you have heard about design thinking but i would recommend that course for all of you friends design thinking it's nothing but you need to have the blueprint in your mind before you design anything let me let me just remind you friends just imagine this particular product here right this particular uh, it's a charger right it's a mobile charger how many times was it made if i ask you i'm not sure how many uh, what how many times will you say friends how many times was this device made right uh, i'm sure many of you will tell me that it was made many times some of you will tell me that it was it was made only once but i will tell you friends it was made twice once in the mind and once physically right that's the answer in fact if you look at any building around you any architect architectural structure have you heard this that the architectural engineers have a blueprint of the building even before the building gets built up you know why so that later on you know just imagine a building had no blueprint at all what would have happened 
so much of confusion would have happened right the kitchen would have been in the hall the hall would have been in the restroom <laughs> right a lot of confusions would have happened that's why blueprint is so important this is just like that blueprinting your future you have to have a blueprint of what you want to achieve right um a mental picture you need to have friends and i will give you a secret here write down your goals what do you want to achieve write it down and put it on a common area where you can see maybe in your bedroom wall or on a on your fridge on a fridge magnet or something like that on a common place where you're consciously reminded every day about about it so this reminder is needed for us sometimes we tend to forget our own goals but if you have a reminder somewhere pasted on a wall and daily it should be a reminder for you you should look at it and you should think oh god okay that's my goal i have to do something today to get closer to that goal remember you have to do something every day that will take you closer to your goals right every single day in fact i read this somewhere recently success is actually hidden in our daily agenda friends every day it's hidden it's the things that we do every day that will take us closer to success right so on the screen you have another quote that says whatever you hold in your mind on a consistent basis is exactly what you will experience in your life let me give you a small example for this friends some days you woke up early in the morning and you thought today is going to be a bad day and you put that belief strongly in your mind what would have happened right i know you know the answer right such days would have been pathetically bad right not just bad to the version of what you thought but it would have compounded in it would have been in a compound interested version right it would, it would have been pathetically bad so is the case with life friends if you are mentally prepared to see the good around you you will see the good around you and then that positive framework of mind is so important so believe this uh, in fact there is one particular book i want to recommend here if you want you can take it down friends it is called the power of your subconscious mind written by dr uh, joseph murphy i'm repeating it again the power of your subconscious mind by dr joseph murphy i'm not going deep down into it because of the want of time right friends uh, because of the paucity of time i'm just being quick but try to get a copy of that book friends and read it it can change your life it can transform your life the power of your subconscious mind by dr joseph murphy it's an amazing book you can also listen to videos by dr bruce lipton amazing guy friends those videos can completely transform your life transform the way you see things it will talk about how powerful a subconscious mind is and how do you program your subconscious mind very simple consciously what you put it in your repeatedly right and consciously what you keep putting into your mind will slowly get into your subconscious mind once it reaches your subconscious mind it becomes very powerful in fact your subconscious mind is thousands of times more powerful than your conscious mind right so it's important for us to program our subconscious mind by consciously putting certain positive things into our mind right consciously on a daily basis you have to keep thinking that i'll i will win for sure i will win for sure i will i will live a life of excellence and those thoughts if it is consciously going into your mind repeatedly you know that that's going to happen someday right friends okay so i'm going forward and let's learn about something more these are certain uh, you know friends websites where you can go and equip yourself i told you the third point i mean the second point in embracing change was we need to upgrade ourselves we need to equip ourselves right where do you go and equip yourself Ap apart from your colleges apart from learning from your colleagues um, apart from uh, you know doing some courses there are these online courses that are very powerful you know i'm going to quickly tell them you can go and browse through them friends you can note them down one is coursera coursera is really good uh, it is associated with a lot of top universities in the world you can do a lot in a lot of nice certifications are there and it is all valuable certifications it's a very nominal charge friends and uh, highly recommended because it's connected to associated with a lot of uh, top universities like john hopkins and all that you have mooc all right mooc is again you can go and visit those mooc sites i'm not going to explain this uh, for want of time udemy is another site uh, but i think better than udemy is coursera that's why i put it first and highlighted it edx is also good edx is harvard university's um, own site friends so likewise you have the other sites here so go and explore these sites friends you can take take down this quickly all right coursera 
MOOC, Udemy, or late, later you can you know listen to the recording if you have forgotten these sites. You can go and refer to them. You will get a lot of courses and uh, pick up some very relevant courses that can help you in the future. Some of those courses that can help you are anything about artificial intelligence or um, you know Bitcoin, blockchain, cloud, and all these uh, are some. How can you connect your career? your profession with those certifications. Don't do an irrelevant certification. You have to connect that certification to your career. Will it be beneficial for me? And then you pick up that and do it. You will get a certificate if you pay for it. I think in some places you will have to pay for a certificate, right? Some courses are free, but if you're taking it freely, you won't get a certificate, but you, will, you would have benefited from the learning. If you're not willing to learn, friends, no one can help you. It's there on the screen. But if you're willing to learn, no one can stop you. I think learning should be a continuous process. Another thing about learning, interesting thing is we should also keep unlearning. I'm not sure if you've heard about unlearning, friends. Unlearning is the process of removing what we have wrongly learned. How do we do that? <clears throat> you know, a lot of people ask me this question. How do I do that? Very simple, friends. You have to continuously keep, uh, you know, um, learning the right things and applying the right things, right? R applying the relevant things, not the irrelevant things. What will happen sooner or later, your brain will discard certain things that are not relevant anymore. But if you keep applying the wrong things again and again, the wrong things also will be retained by your brain. Unlearning is a very important process. I'll quickly tell you a small story. Uh, there was a small boy who was studying for his geography examination, okay? And uh, in fact, geography was my very favorite subject at school. Um, so this particular boy was, you know, he, he was taking his book and he was reading it. Uh, the, you know, he's probably revising from his book. The shape of the earth is round. Uh, the shape of the earth is round. He's learning from his book. Now his father, who's not a very educated man, he comes there and he asks his son, son, what are you learning? So the son tells his father, daddy, I'm learning that the shape of the earth is round. His father, who's not educated, he tells his son, who told you it is round? It is not round, it is flat. Now, his son gets confused. He says, daddy, the, the teacher says it's round. My textbook says it's round. The father says, I'm your father. You better listen to me. All right. Now, the small boy is so confused. Next day, he goes to the examination hall. The first question on the question paper is, what is the shape of the earth? He's so confu confused, right? Teachers tells him the right thing, but father has confused him because he's not a knowledgeable guy. He writes this answer. The shape of the earth is round at school and flat at home. <laughs> right? That's what he writes. The shape of the earth is round at school and flat at home. So if you do not unlearn, this is exactly that what will happen, friends. You know, you will end up applying all the things that you know, which can be harmful. Right. So you have to unlearn. So I hope you've written down all these uh, uh, friends. The best is Coursera. I've done a couple of courses in Coursera. I recently completed a, co a course on uh, positive psychology, right? It's a very amazing course. Um, so you can also, you know, friends, do some relevant courses that can really help you, right? So equipping yourself, I'm going forward. Now, I am not going to explain these competencies, friends, but you can take it down, okay? You can take these competencies down, friends. You can, uh, it can help you. These are nine skills that will help us in a post-COVID world. That is in a post-pandemic world, uh, based on Forbes. Forbes is an amazing uh, organization that gives out their research work is phenomenal, right? They've given us nine skills that all of us need to have that will help us thrive in a post-pandemic world or a post-COVID world, right? What are those nine skills? I'm not going to explain them just because just to catch up with the time that we lost friends. I just think I have some bit of time, right? Adaptability and flexibility is one. Tech savvy, being tech savvy, right, is second. Third is being creative and innovative. Fourth is about data literacy. If you're, uh, please go and browse this, friends, and get details. I'm not explaining them just for want of time. Fifth is critical thinking. It's a very important skill. Digital and coding skills, leadership, emotional intelligence, and empathy. Nine competencies that are so important. Behavioral competencies, right? And also technical. There are technical also. Behavioral and technical competencies that will help us in a post-COVID world. Apart from all the other knowledge that we need to upskill ourselves on, these are nine skills or competencies that will help us. I'm going forward, friends. Uh, I'm not going to take much time here. Right? Yes. So these are books 
So these are powerful books. I want you to take, take them down, friends. Quickly take a screenshot or write them down quickly. Or if you've forgotten to them, of course, you have the recording. You can listen to it later. These are books that can transform us. Very powerful books. Uh, of course, I've read most of these books. Uh, Awaken the Giant Within by Tony Robbins. All these books are amazing. See, I already told you this book about the power of your subconscious mind. Read these books, friends. These books have the power to transform you. Profound books, right? For relationships, there is this book by, uh, by Daniel Goleman on emotional intelligence. It's an amazing book, right, friends? So, so try to get these books, procure these books. It is nothing but you're investing in your future by getting these books. Procure them, read them slowly, right? Get them one by one, read them and try to read, re reread them, right? One's reading will not be sufficient. You may have to read them twice or thrice or maybe even a few times. For example, emotional intelligence, I've read it a few times, friends. Because first time I didn't completely understand the book. I had to read it again and again for me to understand. Every time I read, I learned something new, right? So all these books are amazing. There's Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, highly recommended book. So friends, all the very best. Please uh, do read these books, right? Uh, I'm going ahead, friends, not taking much time here. And if you're not going to learn, if you're not going to read, if you say, no, 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 uh, I'm happy with what I know today, we will all be part of this list and become obsolete, friends. All right? So this is a very dangerous situation that we will get into if we are not going to upskill ourselves, right? So we have to upskill ourselves. Whatever you are, whatever knowledge, how many years of experience you have, all that doesn't matter at all. We have to keep improving ourselves, learning about new things, learning about new technology, uh, technological you know, advancements, um, understanding what's happening in the world, all this awareness we should have, that will help us uh, in our way forward, friends, right? Okay, I'm going forward. Now, Two things that we are very important that we need to see is passion and excellence. I will quickly take you through this. Uh, passion is nothing but that one quality that you must, based on what Napoleon said, he said this, you know, you should, it's one quality that one must possess to win. And that's the definiteness of purpose, the knowledge of what one wants and the burning desire to possess it. So the first thing is purpose. Purpose is why and all your goals and all that, right? Your vision, mission, everything comes under purpose. Why should I achieve this? Right. In fact, there is a book around that, friends. If you read that book, it will give you the answer. I'll quickly show you that. It's it says start with the why. You know, on the screen you have this book. Start with the why. So that will give you the answer. Please try to get a copy of that book and read it. It talks about purpose. Right. It simply talks about purpose. So purpose is important. Second is knowledge. You'll have to you know attain a lot of knowledge by reading and doing courses. The third is that burning desire to you know achieve to possess it to possess whatever. So there are two different levels of careers, friends. One is an opportunity-based career. Another is an interest-based career, right? You know, a lot of people sadly are in the opportunity-based career segment, right? You know, what are they doing? They got an opportunity to work, so they're just working. But then there are another category of people. I mean, I'm not talking just about the educational uh, industry friends in every industry in every field there are two kinds of people two kinds of employees opportunity based right they have an opportunity but there is another category of employees or staff who are interest based right interest they have an interest based career they have passion about what they're doing only passion can make a difference friends Right? Only passion can make a difference. If you do not have passion, right? Am I audible, friends? I think there is a fluctuation again. Hello? Am I audible, ma'am? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. There was a small fluctuation. I'm sorry. So, so friends, I would recommend that, uh, you know, there are two kinds of uh, careers we saw, right? One is the opportunity-based career. Another is the interest-based. Sadly, a lot of people are in the opportunity-based segment. I think we should not be opportunity-based. We cannot make a difference at all. We should get into an interest-based or passion-based. Nothing great was ever achieved without passion. So this passion is so important. Let me give you an example. Um, just look at the, the food that our mothers are making, right? 
for several years they have been making maybe 30 years or 40 years right they've been making this food for us not one day you would have you know felt it bad right rarely maybe when the mood was not really good or maybe slightly there would have been a lack of salt or something but that's it most of the day, of those days if you see it would have been the tastiest food more tastier than any more than what any five star hotel can offer why if you go and secretly watch them cook the food they'll be humming some song and cooking it right they'll be cooking it with so much of passion and love that is what is making that food so tasty compared to any other star hotel right so that's that's so important friends that you do things with love when you do things with love it the results are so powerful if you cook with love the cook, the food is so tasty if you teach with love right what happens there's so much of impact to the teaching if you are doing anything with that passion it can have great results powerful results is what uh, so passion is something that all of us should not leave right passionate work is so important the next is about excellence the next thing is about excellence passion is you know loving and doing whatever you're doing whatever you're doing even if you're eating some food if you can just love it and eat it what will happen you're doing justice to that food right not thinking about anything else in your eating you're completely consciously processing that you're consciously involved in what you're doing that's so important excellence is something for, that follows passion how do you excel i'm going to quickly say it friends excellence can happen because of repetition right and because of your gradual result of always trying striving to do better in fact anthony robbins in his book states that uh, if you want to do in anything if you want to excel in anything right excel in any skill it's about consistency it's about repetition he says this beautifully right repetition is the mother of skill that's what he says repetition is the mother of skill if you're doing certain things passionately again and again and again and again it becomes so impregnated with us right if you ask sachin tendulkar how he became the god of cricket right we all of us admire him so much why because he was repeatedly practicing we did not see his practices but that's where the magic was behind the screen he there were several hours of hard work and practice and passion that he applied so this excellence is a verb that means in order to really excel you have to keep gradually improving yourself friends right how do you do that all those secrets were shared earlier by equipping more by upgrading yourself by not being satisfied with what you are today but by looking forward to grow more to learn more right right friends learning more will help you earn more it's so you know it, it is so relevant you know when you when you learn more you you start to earn more right i'm sharing the secret of earning more friends so that is the power of learning so if you want to excel keep learning more and always strive to be better at whatever you're doing and you will get better at it friends i'm going forward so there are two barriers we will quickly see friends i think uh, i'm close i'm nearing closing time but i will take an additional uh, time of 10 minutes i hope that's fine ma'am but take uh, 10 15 minutes additionally is that fine i'm just getting permission from uh, the organizers okay sir Okay, ma'am. No problem, sir. Can... Sure, ma'am. Oh. Okay, thank you very much, ma'am. So, friends, there are two barriers that we will see. All right, two big barriers that we will have to break in order to be successful. One of the barriers is, you know, our own mind. You know, do you know that the biggest barrier is in our mind? You know, many of us, you know, complain other things, right? The network is not good, uh, but the, the climate is not good. Weather is not good. People are not good. We keep seeing outside ourselves. but just look into your mind friends the biggest barriers are actually sitting in our head our perception can be a barrier the way we are viewing things can be a barrier look at that there's a beautiful word there you are confined by the walls you build yourself that's why they say the biggest battles are going in your mind you the, the biggest battles are in your mind and that's where you need to win more you have to win those battles here if you win the battles in your mind the external battle becomes very easy friends right now on the right hand side extreme right there's a beautiful picture there friends <laughs> see that a horse is a huge horse right a very muscular animal is tied to a small plastic chair and it's still standing there you know this happens you know they do this with elephants also 
the elephant is tied tied with a small rope to a small tree it can just pull it off and go but its mind is where the limitation is this horse thinks that it can't move so it will just stand there till then till it's untied but once it realizes that i am more powerful than what is holding me it can just take this chair and run off right or break the chair with his leg and run off so sometimes situations may appear that it's actually holding us and it's being a barrier friends but remember we are so powerful i want to share a small story that came in the bbc some years back which can definitely encourage you friends so this happened somewhere in england where there is a lot of snow right uh, it's a snowy area i hope all of you heard about avalanche avalanche is nothing but uh, like a landslide that happens in our country right landslide the mountain completely comes down and covers the roads in certain uh, countries there's something called as avalanche avalanche is nothing but a, a complete a, a complete snow hill completely comes down and covers whatever is there on the path so uh, during a, a time when this avalanche was happening there was a lady who went to shop all right she went for a shopping she went along with her daughter so they she went in her jeep all right i think it was a car yes she went in a car she drove the car near the shopping mall left her car little a little away in the parking lot went into the shopping mall but she left her little girl inside the car she went to the shopping mall got the things and by the time she was coming back there was a small avalanche that came and completely covered the car just imagine only a small portion of the car was seen it seems so she was very um, you know she was desperate because her daughter is inside so she went near the car and she start she started you know put, put pulling off the uh, pile of snow and she can in a very feeble voice she can hear her daughter uh, mummy save me and all that so she was so confused because it's a huge piece of snow like rock okay it's on the car so she went back she she tries running back to the shopping mall to get for help but before she goes there there is another avalanche that comes and covers the shopping mall everybody is caught up inside so there's uh, in, a, in a radius of around 5 kilometers it seems there is she can't get any help so she goes near the car i mean the covered car and she is able to see a small portion of the car you know what she did it seems so she thought she wanted to save her daughter somehow that she you know pulled the car outside the snow friends uh, they were so surprised because even 10 men will not be able to do it only a crane will be able to do it but what happened at that point of time when she was interviewed she is saying that she forgot about her physical limitations she didn't all her focus was i need to save my daughter that's it and that generated so much of power in her that she pulled out her car we are so powerful friends not just physically i'm saying mentally also we are so powerful anything is possible for us it's just that we have to break those limitations in our mind and think that i may not be able to do if the day is like this i'm not able to do this because this person is there no nothing like that the limitations are here in fact they say the sky is the limit right so um in fact anything is possible so we have to win over those limitations friends if you have any limitation um please get rid of that right uh, because that's what you need to get rid of there's another barrier we'll quickly see that another barrier is complacency what is complacency complacency is you might have done something great in your life you may have got a lot of awards okay that's all okay keep it aside keep it in your shelf don't take that to your head and become complacent a lot of people who have who get these small success in awards they sleep over that they think wow and they talk about it forever right do not let the best you have done so far become the standard for the rest of your life that's there on the screen friends you may have done a lot of nice things in your life right don't stop with that do more right the opposite of being complacent is being responsible and the secret of your future is hidden in your daily routine i already told you about this friends every day we have a chance to become better let's become better right so that we are equipping ourselves to handle the changes that are going to happen i'm going ahead this is something important i'm not going to take much of time just for want of time friends there's a beautiful book written by joffrey moore on escape velocity i hope all of you have learned about escape velocity in physics what's escape velocity friends it is the min- minimum speed needed for an object to escape gravitational force and to be launched into space now we need to develop such an escape velocity it seems right we need to develop such an escape velocity okay 
it's important that we in the sense there are so many things are gravitational forces in our life for example certain things in our past pulls us down certain uh, you know there is a gravitational force from toxic people people who probably talk you know criticize us it sometimes pulls us down or our own internal barriers that can pull us down we have to rise above all this friends you have to escape develop an escape velocity i'll tell you the secret behind that how do you escape all this how do you free yourself from the from certain toxic gravitational forces that keep you down and how do you develop that escape velocity like the rocket and go above right escape this this particular toxic space how do you do that is you have to be so busy in improving your life that's it right friends they say an idle mind is a devil's workshop i think i am just getting reminded of that when you are so busy improving your life you will have no time to focus on all these things you will have no time to focus on your past maybe a, a failure a small failure in the past or maybe focus on toxic people who are trying to pull you down or even certain things certain barriers of course that you need to break right you would have developed an escape velocity by just focusing on improving your life you'd be so busy in improving your life start doing a course start learning a musical instrument keep yourself busy every day right productively busy not just busy right productively busy and investing in yourself in improving your life and that will make a difference friends try to get a copy of this book escape velocity joffrey moore has written it for organizations but that concept really helps us as individuals also right i'm going ahead friends um that was a nice concept that we saw so you need to believe that what you do matters and will make a difference in others lives also friends right now you don't we don't have to go and save the world in one stroke right we can do it one person at a time i want to share another small story here friends i'm getting reminded of this um you know there's a small boy who's standing near a sea right near a seashore so there are starfishes from the ocean that are coming into the seashore all right so what he's doing is he's taking one starfish at a time and he's throwing it back into the ocean now there's an old man who comes there and asks the small boy hey boy what are you doing and the little boy says i'm trying to save these starfishes starfish you know right the the fish that looks like a star so he says i'm throwing it back into the ocean to save it so the 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 old man is laughing at the boy and saying you want to save the starfish but what difference can you make there are crores of starfishes on the seashore what difference are you making so the boy takes one more starfish on his hand he throws it into the ocean and says i just made a difference for that one you know it's a very powerful story it says that we have to do it one at a time you have to impact one person at a time right and it can make a lot of difference for them that one person so friends don't think that you're too small to make a difference if you have that thought you should <laughs> you know there's a small words there you should sleep alone with a small tiny mosquito you'll see how much difference that small tiny mosquito can make so just imagine how much of difference each one of us can make friends let me give you this thought we are here on this planet to be valuable for others all right let's become more valuable for others that's the the most important thing in life is friends to be a source of value for others in some way or the other if we can uh, be a source of value for not the entire world but one person at a time and slowly you can touch many people in our in the course of a lifetime so i think keep that thought in your mind friends but before you are valuable for others you should keep equipping yourself because if i don't equip myself with knowledge and wisdom i cannot be a source of value for others so it all starts with me being empowered self empowerment and then i become a source of value for the world don't go to the don't go to the extent of becoming a value for the world before you are personally empowered so i have to be personally empowered before i become a value for others so it's important for us to learn for us to equip ourselves with knowledge for us for us to have a positive framework of mind and then we become a value add for others right and remember <clears throat> this is so important we need to be interdependent in the sense the most important thing in life is this is a beautiful african proverb that says if you want to go fast go alone if you want to go far go together right that means you need to have a lot of people people who can support you who can help you. you you can also help them back support them right we need people for us 
people, for example, when, when you are on the verge of giving up, right? What do you usually do, friends, when you're on the verge of giving up, when you're depressed, you call some friend, right? Hey, I'm feeling bad. That guy will also be telling you, correct, man, I'm also feeling bad. Both of you will be feeling depressed. Some people, if you call them, if you're disappointed about something, they'll disappoint you more, right? So you should be calling the right people. You should have a positive circle, a circle who can push you up. For example, you call and tell a friend, hey, man, I think life is terrible. I'm feeling like giving up. That particular friend, if he's a real friend, should tell you, hey, come on, don't give up. How dare you give up? I'll come and kick you if you give up, <laughs> right? A friend who pushes you, you need to have such positive people around us, friends. We need to have such people, right? Who can make a difference in our lives. So connect with such positive people. Your, your circle of influence is so important. If your circle of influence is a negative source of influence, people who can always talk about others. So friends, you how can you find toxic people? I'll tell you. There are some symptoms, right? Like how the doctor says, there are some symptoms of identifying toxic people. These people will talk about other people, right? They will always keep complaining about life. They will have a negative uh, comment to make about every single thing on planet Earth. Be very careful about them, friends, right? Because slowly what will happen is we will get wired into their way of thinking, which can affect our life. So connect with a lot of positive people who can make a difference in your life and not people who pull you down. People have to encourage you and push you up. So we need to connect with more people like that who will be helpful for our life, right? So there are 12 things on the screen. We are coming towards the close of the end, friends. This is a very powerful slide, right? This is uh, based on a lot of research, friends. Uh, it talks about 12 things, right? It talks about 12 things you can do that your future self will thank you for. 12 things that you can do. So I'm not going to explain them. I'm going to quickly read them through and I'm going to make you do one particular thing. Invest in yourself. I already spoke to you, friends. Right On the right side, you see this quote, right? Do something today that your future self will thank you for. That means what do you do? Keep investing in yourself. How can you invest in yourself? By doing courses, by learning, by learning new things, right? By improving your knowledge, by uh, connecting with others who are more educated and talk to them, participate in blogs, right? Learn something new, learn a new instrument, playing a new instrument, something, learning. You need to keep investing in yourself. Second is you have to be who you really are. In the sense, be genuine friends. You don't have to fake it, right? You just have to be yourself. You don't have to be anyone else. Third is decide what, what kind of life do you want? Purpose, goal, vision, everything comes there. Stop reliving your past, right? We have to stop reliving our past, friends. Our past could have been a failure. For example, I failed in my 10th standard, right? I failed in my 10th standard. I don't keep reminding myself of that failure. If I keep reminding about that and thinking, oh my God, can I make any difference in my life? No, I can't, right, friends? So that's gone. Past is already gone. Then you have to... Don't stop learning. That's something that we saw repeatedly, right? Don't stop learning. Get rid of the of life clutter. There is certain clutter in our life. What is this clutter? Clutter is nothing but garbage. Certain things that we have accumulated probably in our mind, you just have to throw it off. You know, sometimes when you clean your room, you'll throw away the old bills, the old letters and all that, right? Likewise, you sometimes we accumulate certain things in our brain, which you just need to declutter, throwing it off, remove it, forget it. Do things that successful people do. Wow, that's an amazing thing. You can just watch what Steve Jobs is doing, what Bill Gates is doing, what certain what is their mindset, what are their mantras, right? And follow them, right? That's a secret, friends, right? We can you you can follow anyone. That's why I'm not giving you examples of people. You can have your own role model. It could be someone from your own family. It could be a father or someone, right? So you just have to have those role models and you know just do the things that they try to do, and we could be successful like them. Choose who to take with you on your path in your life. Yes. It's not just about your spouse, friends. I'm talking about your circle, your entire circle of whomever you want to connect with, whom do you want to go along, right? Because not everyone is uh, important. There are some who are very toxic. Either we can try to help them in detoxifying them, but not at the cost of toxifying us, right? Certain times you have to be careful. There are some people who are too negative. They have a negativity to everything. So be careful. <clears throat> then be flexible. Flexibility is so important, friends. I'm not going to explain much about that. It's self-explanatory. Let others help you. In the sense, if you want help, just shout out for help. If I want help, I just ask for people and I get that help, right? As simple as that. 
Work on improving your communication. You got that? It's a very important competency, friends. Today, I'll tell you, a lot of people are not confident because of the lack of communication. Please, you know, I will uh, give you some tips for to improve quickly. You can join Toastmasters International. Go Google about Toastmasters. Participating in Toastmasters can really help you improve your communication. Second is you can do a course on IELTS, I-E-L-T-S, International English Language Testing System. You usually do this, this, this course if you're going for an um, you know, academ academic program to, to Canada or to Australia or certain places like that. But you can do it to just improve your communication also. It's a very important skill. I think it's one of the most important skills that can really showcase your confidence to the world, right? Twelfth thing is, I think, one of the most important in the list. And I'm going to make you do something, friends. Gratitude, right? I see 243 participants on the call. I'm going to give you two minutes time, friends, right? You know, what is gratitude? Gratitude is being thankful. Call one person in your life and thank them. It can be your mother, your father, your principal, your lecturers, someone who has, you know, been so much of a value add in your life. I want you to call them right now. And after the call, tell me how you felt it. All right. You can put it on the chat section. When we have time to talk, you tell, tell us on the call what magic happened after you thanked them. Thank your mom. She'll be surprised. Right. Or thank a person who has given you so much of value in your life, who has who's been there, supported you. I want you to do that right now, friends. I'm giving you two minutes time. Can you do that? Can you all call? Can you all make a call? I want everybody on the call, if possible. Everybody, just make a quick phone call to someone whom you're really thankful for. Your father, your mother, your principal, school principal, college principal, your teachers, your lecturers, your relatives, your friend, any one person. Just call one person. Can you all do that, friends? I'm going to give you two minutes time for that so that it'll give me some time for me to rest my mouth as well. <laughs> right? But I want all of you to call this. This is a very important activity. Please do it, friends. And I'm going to ask you towards the end of how you felt. Can you all make that call right now? I hope all of you are calling. Please call someone and thank them. But call a person, genuinely thank them. Okay? And tell them how much you care about them and love them and so on. It's called a gratitude call. I hope all of you are doing it, friends. I'm going to give you one more minute, friends. I hope all of you are calling someone. Please do this, friends. It's, it's mandatory that you need to do it. If you're not able to do it now, at least do it later after the call, right? Okay. Okay, friends. So, so I want to conclude uh, this session, friends. Before uh, I, I'll take like two, three minutes to conclude. So there are there are uh, some beautiful uh, you know words on the screen. Always remember that your present situation is not your final destination. That means some of the best days in your life are yet to happen. Have that hope in your life, friends. That that's so true, right? Some of the most happiest days in our life are yet to happen. Let's remember that, friends, and have that hope. We will get over this. Things will get better for sure. All right. And uh, but make sure that you're using this time. When all this is over, you should come out of this strong, more learned, more physically fit. Right. We should not. Uh, after the storm is over, they say. Right. Uh, you will have to be better. Right. Trees go, grow better after the storm because they they would uh, they would have used that storm. Let's use this period to get better. Invest the time wisely. Make the rest of your life the best of your life. So before I conclude, friends, I want to just tell you this, uh, friends, that see, there are, uh, where do you take this encouragement from? You know, many people ask me, I sometimes feel so depressed. I, I don't feel encouraged. You know, where you can take this encouragement from is from people in your home itself. 
your own parents all right or your relatives can be the biggest source of encouragement let me give you a small example of why you should not give up okay let me remind you about our mothers friends all right and i'm sure there are a lot of mothers on the call so they will be able to relate to it you know friends when we were there in our mother's womb and when we were about to come outside uh, i'm sure you've heard about the pregnancy pain right right the through right when they are when they are about to deliver a baby right it happens even beyond that you know what mothers could have done they could have gone to the doctor and said doctor i'm i having an unbearable pain please abort my child right they could have done that isn't it friends they could have said i don't want this child i'm i'm not able to bear it and in those days it was very easy there was not not much of complication doctors would easily do it did, but did they do that no just because it was painful they never gave up on us friends isn't it they they wanted to see our faces they wanted to see us grow i think one of the biggest en encouragement or the positive encouragement we can take it is from mothers who went through pain but they never gave up we might be in certain pain today friends but don't give up right please don't give up there's going to be a beautiful life ahead of us but if you give up that beauty will go the beauty of life depends upon whether you are not giving up that's what matters i think we should not give up it's not just about mothers even it's about our parents both fathers and mothers who have even invested in our education right maybe they had to pay our college fees which was not easy right but did they stop paying it because it was difficult for them if they had stopped paying it today we wouldn't be on this call friends we wouldn't be in working in such um, you know wonderful institutions right hard work from them so i think that they are the biggest encouragement we should take this encouragement from them all the very best friends i think my i put my contact on the screen uh, both my uh, number and my mail id is there if you want you can mail me or you can keep in touch uh, at any point of time uh, if you want any kind of counseling or guidance you can keep in touch i'm very thankful to the for giving me this opportunity my apologies that you know there was a tough of fluctuation that happened once in a while i'm thankful to the uh, vice principal the principal the management um, and uh, uh, i'm thankful for everyone who invited me uh, to this college i'm thankful to mahima ma'am i'm i'm thankful to uh, arul meri ma'am she's also my chitti and i'm very thankful to her uh, for inviting me uh, for this uh, conference so thank you very much friends i think we can also have a small time for questions if you have any you can open up i'm very in, uh, you know uh, i'm very curious to know about the gratitude call i'm not sure if you have made that call uh, but if you have made that call you can put it on the comment section friends uh, what was the impact of that call maybe you called your mother and your mother said hey you're calling me and thanking me you she could have been so surprised but it would have brought so much of joy in her face right if you have not done it please do it after this call friends So thank you very much, everyone. Um, I'm done, ma'am. Good, so. good afternoon, sir. Thank you very much for this enlightening uh, presentation. Yes, I have a couple of questions from our participants. Um, yes, the first one is how to measure success in life, mm -hmm. and the second one is what is the difference between critical thinking and negative thinking? Okay. Okay, interesting. It, so I will answer both these questions, ma'am. The first question is, uh, how do you define success in life? Uh, so, but before I go there, you have to first of all know the definition of success, friends. What is exactly success? So a lot of people think that if I reach that place, I'll be successful. If I if I attain that position, I'll be successful. But based on a lot of research, what they found out is that success is nothing but happiness, right? success is happiness if you are living your life happily that's success so happiness is uh, see for example a doctor he wants to uh, do that surgery with absolute precision and he gives all his focus and attention and hard work to do that surgery why is he doing that so that at the end of the surgery he is happy his chief doctor is happy the patient is happy the patient's relatives are happy a small girl who patient she wants to uh, you know ultimately what what is success about it's about happiness she wants to you know get high marks in the examination but what is the end result of that marks she'll make herself happy her principal happy her teachers happy her parents happy so friends you have to realize that success is about happiness and uh, let me tell you this secret if you are keeping yourself happy 
you're already aligning yourself to success. This is a very powerful secret, all right? If you are keeping yourself happy, you are in a vibration that is aligning you to success. A person who is happily working is a productive person, they say, right? So I would say that every day as you're working, friends, you should work happily. If you're, uh, you know, even doctors, when they do a surgery, they don't do it sadly. <laughs> you ask any doctor in your friend circle if they're doing it sadly. They'll just be so passionate in doing that surgery. Ask your mothers if they're sadly cooking the food. I know there were days they were sadly cooked. What would have happened? They would have forgotten to put the salt and all that. But most of the days they were happily cooking it. And that's why it ends up. So success and happiness is so connected, right? So, so the definition of success is that not that a uh, lot of people think I have to attain that position to be successful. No, just being happy friends. If you go through the, uh, if you travel across the road at, this, at the end of the road, you see people uh, who are uh, probably street vendors. You see the amount of happiness in this on their faces. It's just amazing. You know, they're already uh, successful is what I would say. Right, friends? So, uh, so that is one thing. Another thing is, uh, see, critical thinking and negative thinking are two different things. All right. So when you're critically processing things, you're nothing but you're looking at the situation through a perspective of how you can improve the situation. You're not looking at the limitations. You're looking at it from a solutioning perspective on how you can improve the situation. But negative thinking is you're looking at only the limitations there. You're not looking at the, the positive side or how can I improve the situation? That is a very dangerous mindset, friends, right? It's a very dangerous mindset because if you're looking at a situation from a, a negative eye and thinking that, oh my God, this is a limitation. If you're looking at it like a limitation, it is a limitation, right? If you're looking at a limitation as a limitation, it is a limitation. But rather, if you're looking at it critically and thinking, how can I solve it? How can I fix the problem? Every problem is fixable, right? Every problem is fixable. So looking at a problem from important than looking at it from a negative eye. A negative eye is a limiting eye. A critical eye is always an eye, a solution-oriented eye. Anything else? Uh, thank, thank you, sir. Thank you. One more question is there from a participant. What is your foresight on people's behavior in post epidemic uh, pandemic uh, period? Okay. Uh, I'll repeat, sir. Yes, ma'am. Uh, what's your foresight on people's behavior in post pandemic period? Thank you very much for that question. Whoever asked that question is amazing because I've been observing the behaviors of people. Honestly, I will tell you, friends. You're going to be surprised about the behaviors of, behaviors of people post-pandemic. People are getting much better, I will tell you. More kinder, more compassionate, more they're having more empathy. The helping mentality in people has gone up, right? Uh, so the world is going to be a better place after the pandemic, is what I would say. Um, so I'm just focusing on the good side here, friends. A lot of people in my circle, uh, some of them who are not that helpful are have become very helpful. Some of them, they re about people. People are the most important. We are all in this uh, together, right, friends? So I think after the post-pandemic, even if you see people in your family or in your uh, or in your uh, in your circles, you'll see a lot of positive difference in them, right? Um, you'll see that positive difference. I see a question. If they are, oh, that question just passed by. I'm sorry. Yes, ma'am. Um, there's some other question that just popped up about employers or employees. The same, uh, same question, sir. Employers' behavior hmm. in post-pandemic period. Employers' behaviors are changing, right? A lot of leaders, a lot of employers are changing. Same thing. They're becoming more kinder. They've realized that, you know, people have to be kind. One hard word, friends, can destroy the mindset of people. So be very careful that whatever you speak, you're speaking only words of kindness. You're not there uh, harming anybody with your words, you know? So taste your words before you spit them outside. It's very important. Yes. So the questions were from Ms. Geeta Priya, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. And what's the question, ma'am? No, sir. The earliest asked questions oh, okay, were from. Okay, it was from her. Okay, ma'am. Okay. So friends, about the about the call, the gratitude call, I'm just yet to hear. Uh, can one person on the call talk about the gratitude call or ma'am, is there anything about the gratitude call in the comment section? 
No, sir. No, sir. Nothing, uh, is it? Okay. okay. Yes, sir. No, sir. Give some suggestions to overcome emotional limitations. Yes, ma'am. That's a nice question. Yeah, emotional uh, limitations are there. We all of us are emotional, but we need to regulate our emotions, right? So that's a good question. I'll just keep it very brief, ma'am, just for want of time. I will recommend this book, uh, Emotional Intelligence by Daniel Goldman. And uh, to, to in order for us, see, all of us have, have emotions. That's a very important part of all of our lives. But we have to regulate it. You know, like, this regulator is what reduces the speed or increases the speed. In the same way, we will have to regulate our emotions. You know, sometimes what happens is, uh, you know, our anger comes out, right? Our, you should make sure that your anger is not affecting. You have to regulate it. How do you do that? Consciously take an effort. For example, if you think that your anger is affecting others, start taking a conscious... Thank you so much, uh, uh, Vinodini ma'am. I called my mom and thanked her. Okay. I'm so happy to hear that. <laughs> okay. So do that, friends. You'll see magic happen. By the way, about emotional control, you have to emotionally resist that, that urge to be impulsive. How do you do that? Consciously. For example, uh, tomorrow in a, in a situation when you're getting angry, realize that you're getting angry. Okay, Consciously realize it and try to resist that. Right? And try to you know, control your anger and only speak words. Don't... If you try that two, three times, you will get habituated to that. You'll get wired to that. In fact, you can change the patterns of your brain. In fact, there's a beautiful word called neuroplasticity. You can go and browse on that, friends. There's something called neuroplasticity, which is nothing but the ability of your brain to rewire itself. You can rewire your brain. Maybe you have a habit of getting angry for a long period of time. You can rewire it. You can put a different algorithm to your brain and uh, you can be a different person and a different... Uh... So don't allow your emotions to affect your conversations. Consciously take the effort on a daily basis and you'll improve over a period of time. It's not a one day thing. It'll take like two, three months for you to get emotionally in control. Yes. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Such a wonderful. Thank you so much, sir. Such a wonderful speech and a needed thoughts through our pandemic. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, ma'am. It's so time you. to move thank on. You, thank you, ma'am. Thank, thank, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. It's time to move on our valedictory. Challenges are what make life interesting. Overcoming them is what makes life meaningful. Now, I invite Dr. S. Devi, Coordinator and Administrative Officer of Madurai Gandhi NMR Subraman College to deliver the valedictory welcome address. Thank you, Saraswati. Good afternoon, everyone. First and foremost, I welcome and convey my regards to the chief guest of this function, our founder, president and director, Mr. M.K. Jawahar Babu sir, to this wonderful valedictory function. I feel honored to introduce our honorable, honorable chief guest of today's valedictory function, Mr. M.K. Jawahar Babu, uh, founder of, uh, founder president of Saurashtra Vidya Sangha. He is born with a silver spoon. He is from a patriotic background. And he was brought up by his paternal uncle, Sri Anamar Subraman, sir, fondly called as Madhuri Gandhi. Mr. Jawagar Bapu is a chemical engineer. He did his engineering degree at London University. He is the president of Saurashtra Girls Vidya Sangha, which runs an aided girls' school, an aided elementary school, and a matriculation higher secondary school, other than our college. He is an active member of Rotary International. He is also the treasurer of Madhuri Gandhi Museum. An ever enthusiastic, kind-hearted human who always dare to do the toughest tasks with so much of ease. There is no word like impossible in his personal dictionary. He is a vast reader of books. He has profound knowledge in politics, world economy, sports, literature, science, and every field that exists. He has supported nearly 200 families of our own students with 100 rupees worth groceries during the first lockdown. He supports a number of students by giving scholarships. He is the man behind the development of our institution and our other allied institutions. He is also an exemplary family head. His sons are the topmost positions in two of the world's best companies. Apart from his positions in the outer world, he is a very disciplined family man who is totally against wasting money or food 
except for providing to the needy a truly soft hearted man and his fitness and enthusiasm is contagious and has a very stylish english accent and a smart way of delivering speeches we feel proud to work under his leadership i am very to, very proud to have the opportunity to introduce him to you all hearty welcome to you sir without taking much time i am immensely pleased to welcome our most respected multi talented down to earth wonder woman our correspondent ma'am mrs mv janaranjani welcome ma'am i feel honored to welcome our efficient and adorable secretary ma'am mrs kalaiwani to this valedictory function we had a very enlightening session for the past one and a half hours it is because of the way you presented sir i welcome mr fleming samson from hcl technologies i wholeheartedly welcome you sir without the guidance of dr samuel and the silver this two day program could not have been a successful one i wholeheartedly welcome you sir i am pleased to welcome our beloved principal dr k s gomathi also the head of the computer science department she is the one who joins hands so warmly for all the efforts made in the development of the institution i welcome the convener of this two day mega faculty development program dr mahima vice principal and head of commerce department an active nss program officer she motivates and arrange for the students to visit orphanages old age homes and brings the humane part of every children of our college welcome to this function dear mahima my welcome address will not be complete if i don't mention this category the wonderful educational leaders from various parts of the nation I extend a very warm welcome to all the delegates present here. It is my duty to welcome the hard-working team of Commerce Department, without whom this program would not have been possible. I welcome all the heads and staff of various departments of our college. Once again, I extend a warm welcome to one, one and all present here. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. A person can achieve everything by being simple and humble. I invite our President, Mr. M. K. Jawagar Babu, ANCRT London, President of our Madurai Gandhi and Namar Subaraman College, to deliver the valedictory address. Sir, it is not audible, sir. Please unmute, sir. Uh, at the outset, I would like to uh, thank uh, Dr. Devi for the kind words of introduction. Three cheers to our uh, three musketeers, namely Dr. Gomati, Dr. Mahima, and uh, Dr. Devi. This uh, trio team is doing wonders. In fact, uh, they could uh, arrange uh, two seminars back to back within a week. Hats off to our principal and the commander of this uh, Three Musketeers, Dr. Gomati, who is not only taking a leading role in our NMRS College uh, seminars, but also taking part in the other uh, uh, colleges uh, events as uh, a resource person. Now, I think uh, apart from Dr. Uh, Gomati, Dr. Mahima, and uh, Dr. Devi, uh, for the fitting finale, uh, we have with us uh, the august presence of uh, the moderator for uh, today's uh, uh, program, Mr. Fleming Sampson from HCL Chennai. Ranjani Madam, our correspondent, our uh, secretary Kalevani Madam, uh, revered uh, teachers, participants, the faculty of the Commerce Department, and my brothers and sisters. I think once again, my greetings to uh, all the participants uh, from Mother Gandhi and the Master Brahman College of Women. I think uh, no individual or institution is uh, unaffected or untouched by this uh, cruel uh, pandemic. Obviously, 
there comes the question of uh, WTF, that is, what is the future? When will, when will we have new version of normal? What does the new normal mean? What and how the post-pandemic scenario will be? These are uh, some of the questions I think uh, widely discussed in the press. We are indeed very fortunate to have a very well informed gentleman from the corporate world, Mr. Fleming Samson, as our moderator for the topic, leading and thriving in the post pandemic world. In fact, uh, uh, Mrs. Uh, Samson beautifully handled the subject uh, for the benefit of participants. In fact, uh, in his uh, flawless English, uh, in fact, uh, he has impressed everyone. Uh, in fact, uh, I have taken down notes of what, what all he said. In fact, uh, I've also taken the snapshots, uh, I think for my uh, future reference. Uh, he, he mostly talked about uh, the uh, positive uh, thinking and the mind of power and other things. I think uh, he has infused a lot of enthusiasm through the various anecdotes, stories and examples, particularly the potato egg coffee bean example, uh, then the oak tree and the gold and other things. And he also talked about uh, uh, Stephen Covey's uh, book, Seven Hub Habits of an Effective people. I think that's my favorite book too. In fact, I have read it, reread it so many times. It's, it's one of my best books I've ever read. In fact, I would also recommend uh, another uh, book uh, with a title, uh, tough, tough Times Never Lost, But Tough People Do. I think uh, uh, I can, we can talk about uh, uh, Mr. Fleming's speech for a very long time, but for want of time, I think I will reserve it for a later date. I reckon leading and thriving in the post-pandemic world requires agile in leadership. Agile is the acronym for approachable, grounded, innovative, leverager, and empathetic. Approachable, you know, it's, uh, I think in Sanskrit, it's called uh, saulabhyam. Uh, that is one who can be easily approached. I think uh, that is the trait of uh, Lord Rama, who is the personification of an ideal human being. Grounded means being practical, uh, realistic, and balanced. Also being proactive rather than reactive. Innovative, of course, means uh, not only out of box, but making a bigger box. Leverager is something, you know, doing more with less. Empathetic, you know, I mean, uh, uh, that is to know how to get into the shoes of others. And I think uh, once you do that, uh, success is at your feet. To conclude, uh, we can say, uh, staying agile in leadership not, uh, is not exceedingly difficult, but takes a little bit of effort and open mind. I think uh, we have had a very, very uh, useful, uh, this uh, uh, faculty development program, two-day program uh, in collaboration with uh, IQAC. I think I must uh, once again, thank all the organizers for the beautiful uh, uh, web webinar. I think I should uh, see you soon in some other program. Uh, please uh, stay at home, stay healthy, and have vaccination. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir, for your wonderful valedictory address. Thank you very to much. Be sir. To be a successful multi talented person in the modern day, you want to channelize your talents. Now I invite Mrs. M. V. Janaranjani Man, correspondent Madurai Gandhi NMR Subraman College, to deliver the felicitation. Good morning to everybody. 
who are all participating in this program. We are conducting national level faculty development program for educational leaders. So for that, the convener is Dr. Mahima and the principal Dr. Gomati and the IQAC, that is in association with internal quality assurance cell, we are conducting this program. So the coordinator for IQAC is Dr. S. Devi. So I appreciate the work and uh, I congratulate them for the success of this function. And the program coordinators are Saraswati, uh, Arul Mary, Saraswati, Sangeeta, Surya Kala, and Sharmila. All the names are start with S. Yes. The four uh, program coordinators' names start with S. Yes. That indicates success to the program. So I feel that like that. Then uh, the inaugural address was given by um, Anbu Selvan. That is, uh, uh, what is it? Samuel Anbu Selvan, he said that best education should be given to the students and uh, the leaders, the education leaders should encourage the skill of the faculty. And the UGC also tells about that the learning and uh, uh, teaching process should be developed. So this is what he said in his uh, inaugural address. Then the resource person, Dr. Sri uh, pra Rega Prasad, he, is, he has got 18 years of experience in teaching and eight years uh, administrative experience he had. And uh, he has given a very elaborate tips for the educational leaders. That is uh, nowadays the uh, education has become very, very challenging. And uh, they, we have to do more things, how to tackle with the situation in the, this pandemic period. That is the uh, lecturers are not finding uh, very comfortable and they feel that it is very difficult to prepare and teach the children on online classes. So at this juncture, we, we need uh, the educational leaders. They should make the faculty uh, to prepare the situation that, that is to uh, tackle the situation in a nice way and they should make a slight difference in the institution and the student's outcome. They should encourage the skills and talents of the teachers and they should make the uh, decision making should be theirs and it should be according to the situation they have to make such decisions. And uh, the travel may stop but nothing will happen. The tourism may stop due to COVID-19, nothing will stop. But the education stops, what will happen? The whole future career and life will be spoiled for the students. So they must be very careful and uh, the leaders should be very attentive in redesigning and uh, improving the curriculum of the, of the education system. That is, that should improve the education system. And uh, he said that is uh, the leaders have got in a very chaos condition in completing the terminal exams and completing the syllabus in the stipulated time and uh, how, how to start the next academic year like that. They have got so many problems. They have to follow the technology to connect the parents, teachers, and family. And uh, finally, before that is the, the college reopens, they have to see the physical distance between the students and the intensive bleeding and also the, the movement around the college, they have to watch everything. It is a great burden to the educational leaders. So they have to be very careful in their activities. Then today's function, today uh, Fleming Saxon, he is a... Uh, developing the talents of the people and he is a manager enterprise of uh, human resource and uh, he gave a very wonderful speech. I like his speech. Then enthusiasm creates us, uh, that is get rid of the difficulties by showing a story, elephant story. It was struck in the mud of the river and it was, it was not able to bring out, that is nobody is able to bring out the elephant from the river, 
but the drum beat gives enthusiasm to the elephant and itself it comes out so the enthusiasm is very important and positive thinking is very important he said and we have uh, uh, that is we have uh, that is uh, we we are be able to do actions but we don't have any uh, free freedom on the consequences of the happenings that is what our holy script bhagavad gita it is said that we have to do the actions as we please but the result we should not expect any result from it if we do good things good things will happen if we do bad things bad thing will happen so like that it is said in bhagavad gita like the, the same uh, concept is given by feminine uh, feminine samson feminine samson and uh, i like it very much and uh, there are so many people gave uh, so many examples and he, he gave an example of passion is very essential for teaching because with passion if the mother cooks food then it will be very delicious than the five star hotel food so passion is very important if the teachers are teaching with passion and the students also will like it and uh, that thing he insisted and uh, if you go on uh, we go if you want to go fast we should go alone if you we want to go far we have to go together so he said that example also and uh, excellence is uh, comes through practice only the meechi tiruvenai aakum endu solvargal and the madri excellence excellence we will get only by practice so he said so many things uh, i can say um, i can elaborate but i want to uh, say few words about him we are free to choose action but we are not free to choose the consequences is said brain stores that is a uh, that the visuals whatever we see it is stored in the brain so for the children violent scenes should not be shown to the children so the good things should be shown to them and uh, the mind gets the the store that is mind stores that uh, whatever we see whatever we hear it will be stored in the mind so we have to see the good things only secret of your future is hidden in your daily routine and we have to don't let the best you have done so far so the whatever we have done the past we will get gratitude from the future so the gratitude is a word we must remember always we have to be very grateful to fleming samson for giving us such an excellent uh, speech so i like it very much and i thank you my gratitude goes to him in a in a in a very extent manner so i like to thank you, thank you once again and i want to say something about our college we have got a library of 10000 books that uh, enrich that is that uh, makes the reading habit of the students and they enrich the knowledge by reading the books and we have a, a pema a club in a department of commerce and that makes the students to take part that is a platform to expose their potential talents and by potential talents they can show their whatever they are able to do so that makes them to face the demanding future and we are also along with the curriculum we have workshop we have seminars we are conferences like subject uh, by subject experts so that will make the students to come really in a positive way they, they, they will be good citizens in the country so thank you very much wish you all the best and i wish all the uh, department should do this type of program and i like it very much i thank ms dr mahima dr devi and dr uh, Uh, gomati for all these things i thank you very much thank you thank you so much for your appreciation ma'am thank you for your care about all of us ma'am
a simple smile that is the start of opening your heart and being compassionate to others i invite mrs m n m h kalaiwani ma'am secretary madurai gandhi nmr subramanian college to deliver special felicitation Ma'am, unmute yourself, ma'am. Excuse me, ma'am. Excuse me, ma'am. Can you unmute yourself, ma'am? Yes. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Good morning to one and all. MJ Nmaras College, a philanthropic association dedicated to higher education or college, has conducted two-day national level faculty development program for educational leaders. Our respectful president, MK Jawar Babu sir, is a great scholar and always insists students to create a hobby of reading books, which will support them to gain knowledge and opportunities for their future. Our correspondent, Janaranjani Bai Madam, who is an asset of various arts, who always likes to introduce our special guests and speakers from her and from, from her memory, their names and their designations from her memory. Our supportive and enthusiastic principal, Dr. Gomadi, who always gets involved in various seminars national level and international level in her department-wise subjects and other department-wise subjects. Our AO, Dr. Devi, and also coordinator of IQAC, who always introduces all with her gracious welcome speech. Our vice principal, Dr. Mahima, and the head, head of of Commerce Department and convener of this two days conference is an energetic person who likes her subject and also involved in social activities such as NSS. Yesterday, inauguration was made by Dr. Professor Samuel Anbu Selvan from American College. He is who, is, uh, who has organized resource person of yesterday's Dr. Sri Ranga Prasad and who is always a helping hand to our commerce department. Our yesterday resource person, Dr. Sri Ranga Prasad speech was very informative and very apt in this pandemic situation. He said the progress must be made like the progress in family and our family members will be here, teachers, principal, administrators, and deans, etc. He also compiled his speech in some nine points, some, and some of them are as below. Their job is to put and insist students' achievements by formulation of challenging and supportive environment situations. And the responsibilities should be gained through practices in teaching and learning. And their goals should be achieved, should be achieved in, in a progress way as in quality, improving quality of their meetings with them in this present situation. He also insisted to create mentors, which we do in in, uh, in level of man in level of members in the management, in level of uh, faculties, and also in level of students. We all do this, and and he also said to solve the uh, pandemic situation, we should we should be. We should remote and screen based activities should be done, which includes curriculum requirements, namely 
health and safety guidelines, which will allow the institutions to be to maintain their situation in this pandemic area, in this pandemic period. And also he insisted on same SMS as we all do. You should use soap uh, often. We should use mask and also we should have social distancing and also one more additional. We should vaccine ourselves. That That is what he insisted yesterday on the heading on the heading of yesterday, that is to level of fact, uh, to education, to on the heading of education, to improve development program for educational leaders. Today, Professor Fleming Sampson, who gave so many examples in the, in his, through his pictures and his heading of speech is leading and thriving in the post-pandemic world, which was very splendid and gave many examples and stories. And he compiled his speech in the following points. That is, first he said, shift in perception. That is to change what we think in our mind. Next, stimulus to response, but with control. That is what all we need today. And participation in new normal times, which means accept the situation. He gave many examples in which I like this. For example, in the last few years, we had typewriters and now we are uh, changing it. We have changed it for computers from typewriters to uh, we have changed to computers. As such must be our motto and as such must be our mind to think of the new things to be done in this pandemic days. And also he has given so many explanations of learning and unlearning and the nine skills in pandemic world, including digital skills and the passions and excellence. And also some books that will transform us to think of positive things. And always he also insisted in the passion development in this pandemic pandemic period and also he finally he ended his speech with people must have productivity should be productively productivity productively busy and believe that, that what we do matters and will make a difference in people's lives to change what goes in our mind should be always determined. As such, our former president, Dr. Abdul Kalama has said, you should go on uh, uh, working for the goal and not stop until we reach the goal. And I thank all these special speakers for their splendid and beautiful speeches done yesterday and today. And I also thank our program, our program coordinators Saraswati, Mrs. Saraswati, Mrs. Mary Arul Mary, Mrs. Sangeeta, Mrs. Surya Kala, Mrs. Sharmila. As a commerce student, I thank Dr. Mahima for conducting this webinar. Thank you. Thank you for your special address, ma'am. Each person must live their life as a model for others. Now I invite Dr. K. S. Gomati, principal, Head Department of Computer Science, Madurai Gandhi and Subraman College to deliver special felicitation. A very good afternoon to one and all gathered here. Thank you for the opportunity to felicitate this occasion. I really feel happy to hear that more participants over cities, states and overseas have registered to take part in this national level faculty development program. The Department of Commerce has organized this national level FDP in collaboration with IQAC for the faculty members of various departments and from various colleges. It is a great honor for me to be a part of it. It is the right moment to thank our management for their immense support, motivation and encouragement in conducting such events. A special thanks to all the participants who show interest to take part in such events. I express my gratitude to the major pillar of our college, our founder, president, director, Mr. Jawahar Babu sir. 
The stimulator for us to arrange such innovative programs is none other than our correspondent and secretary, Mr. Janaranjani Ma, who is the mother of all of our staff members. We have with us our eminent secretary, Mrs. Kalevani Ma, who motivates us in all ways. I thank Dr. Samved and Selvam sir for his tremendous support and valuable inauguration address and for the brilliant reference of the resource persons for our faculty development program. My sincere thanks to our resource persons, Dr. N. V. Sriranga Prashad, Assistant Professor and Head, Department of Business Management, Satmana University, Telangana, for the wonderful address about educational leadership yesterday. A special thanks to our today's resource person, Mr. Fleming Samson, Manager Enterprise HRS SCL Chennai, for his wonderful address about leading and thriving in the post-pandemic world with more interesting stories. My special appreciation to Dr. S. Mahima, the team leader, for the interest she shows in arranging such FDPs for the faculty members. My sincere gratitude to Dr. S. Devi, our IQEC coordinator and administrative officer, for his marvelous support in encouraging all the department staff for arranging continuous programs for the welfare of staff and students' family. Congratulations and special wishes to the energetic and enthusiastic staff members of Commerce Department for their tireless efforts and efficient work for making all arrangements. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Success is the sum of small efforts repeated day in and day out. Now I invite Dr. S. Mahima, Vice Principal, Head, Department of Commerce, Madhuri Gandhi and Nama Subraman College to deliver the vote of thanks. Thank you, Sarasidhiba. I would uh, mention that thanks for the highest form of thought and the gratitude is the happiness doubled by wonder. Good afternoon to one another present here. We have successfully completed two days national level faculty development program and we have entered into the valedictory moment. First of all, I express my gratitude to our management for permitting us to conduct the National Faculty Development Program. I thank our President, Mr. Jamagat Babu sir, Founder, President and Director of our NGNMRS, who has presided over the valedictory moment and delivered delivery the valedictory address. I thank our Correspondent and Secretary, Mr. Janaranjani Ma'am, for her presence and continuous support and motivation. I express my gratitude to our Secretary, Mrs. Kalivani Ma'am, and all our executive members. On behalf of the Department of Commerce, my heartfelt thanks to Dr. Samuel and the children, sir, Department of Commerce, the American College, who guided and supported us throughout the FTP and presided over the inauguration and delivered the inaugural address. Extend my gratitude to the speaker who made yesterday's event a remarkable one. Dr. N. B. Sriranga Prasad, Assistant Professor and Head, Department of Business Management, Telangana, who have accepted to deliver his viewpoint on educational leadership for educational leaders. I express my gratitude to our today's champion, Mr. Fleming Sir, HCL, HCL Chennai, who rocked by his excellent delivery of his viewpoint in the topic leading and thriving in the post pandemic world. We have to respond to our changes to attain our goals. Key points from his speech were, we have to accept, adopt and integrate. Everyone must be future ready to live and not survive. Minds must reach the goal before our goal life does. Each of our lives is the battle and your words paved the way for the delicate path, sir. Everything around is made twice, once in the mind and once physically. We assemble here, uh, we are sure that we will keep our uh, good and valuable thoughts in our subconscious mind, sir. You have told us the most needed thoughts through our pandemic, sir. We all must have burning desire to attain our goals and I am sure we will work on it, sir. Blessed to have you as our resource person today. As a whole, our session is mind-blowing one, sir. I assure that everyone is impressed. My special thanks to our principal ma'am for being with us in all the arrangements, keep supporting us to reach heights in all the aspects. I want to use this platform to greet her on this special day. Happy birthday, principal ma'am. Oh. And I extend my gratitude to our administrative officer and IQAC coordinator, Dr. S. Devi ma'am, for supporting uh, support extended for the completion of all the tasks in a better way. 
I am pleased to thank all the various department heads and my dear colleagues, non-teaching staff members and librarian also. I thank uh, my supporting team of faculties from Department of Commerce, Mr. Sarath Kusi, Mr. Smeiri Arulmati, Mr. Sangeeta, Mr. Surya Kala, and Mr. Sarmila for rendering a better support for such wonderful arrangement. Special thanks to Mr. Saraswati for being as a moderator for this two-day uh, FDP. And I want to thank personally Mrs. Vinodri and Mrs. Uh, Ms. Mahalakshmi of Computer Science for their support. The outcome of the program is expected to bring about a healthy enhancement in the academic and intellectual environment as the at the respective institutions of the participating faculties. My heartfelt thanks and appreciation to all the participants from various institutes, universities, various states. I am proud to announce that uh, in this National Faculty Development Program, we have international participants too. Special thanks to those participants overwhelmed with the positive responses received from the participants, feeling blessed. And uh, finally, I thank Dr. Uh, Srinivasan for successfully arranging this event flawless. Once again, I thank you all. Thank you. Uh, what is the next program, Mahima? May I know? Uh, completed, ma'am. After a of thanks. Uh, okay, do you have national anthem or anything like that, or we can conclude? We, we can conclude, ma'am. We can conclude and we will take a screenshot also, ma'am. Okay, okay. Dear participants, kindly unmute your video. We will take one screenshot. I request our resource person to unmute this video. And all the participants and our management people. Dear participants, kindly unmute yourself. Actually, ma'am, is the research person available, ma'am? No, ma'am. Okay, okay. He's not there. Okay, you will take the screenshot with our management people and... Uh, Audio, Buddha. Yes, ma'am. Audio, Mujia. What about that? Go out of the ma. Mahima, okay. what do you want to tell me? Uh, screenshots, ma'am. Photo, photos of herself, ma'am. So, ma'am, everyone covered, ma'am. Pretty enough. Surya Kala, ma'am. Can you please switch on your video, ma'am? Thank 
ओके मैम थैंक यू प्रिंसिपल मैम थैंक यू ऑल द पार्टिसिपेंट्स थैंक यू ऑल थैंक यू एवरीवन थैंक यू